patient has priority. Any aircraft uh, on emergency of a technical reason of sure starvation has a priority. But people might just decide and say this is a VIP movement. In any case, with a radar environment, this is easy to manage. So uh, I, I'm not saying uh, we are going to do. We've already done something in that regard. And if anything comes up, please, we would like to deal with it and we would like to resolve it. There is nothing like VIP movement that, that is causing delay in our airspace. Now, the, those who think, I mean, some pilots also suggest that, look, it's believed in some quarters that pilots are given certain instructions that if you have a snag, don't include it in a tactical logbook. They write it on a piece of paper, pass it to the engineer, who uh, they eventually just leave that out on the check log, such that the recreation you talked about at the initial stage doesn't pick it. How do you ensure that these internal regulatory mechanisms, operational audit, adhere to strict or sense of? Well, Chamberlain, I, I lost you, but I, I, I want to believe that your trail is about internal mechanism. You see, when we talk about internal mechanism or self-regulatory ability of an airline, for every airline in this country and anywhere else in the world, there's what we call a designated or designated airworthiness surveyors that on a daily basis, on hourly basis, on aircraft per aircraft basis, the supervisor and other airworthiness surveyors supervise this aeroplane. And I remember saying that if an aeroplane on taxi or at any point in time says to Nama, oh, I can no longer taxi, I just want to check my tire, I just want to check my radio, I just want to check my wiper on, on, on the, on the, on the, on the uh, 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 windbreaker of the aeroplane. NAMA demands a signatory of the airworthiness surveyor who would have looked at that technical issue. Don't also forget that the licensed aircraft engineer or the airworthiness supervisor in the airline has a license he needs to protect. And that license is given under authority by delegation of the federal government of Nigeria. So his first loyalty is to that license. Because any compromise, he loses the license and loses his job and might be subjected to prosecution. So we, it's like saying a doctor in a theater would decide to make a mistake to kill a patient. Of course, the oath of office will not allow you to do that. So we must give utmost good faith to what we are doing, to what the airline is doing. And that's why the regulatory framework is such demanding on the airline and even before they get the air, the air operator certificate AOC a lot of work should and must have been done so the internal mechanism to uh, do all of that the technical log and if any airline is caught the, 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 the punishment the sanction is enormous and we cannot begin to uh, tell you every day we have caught this airline doing that and doing that. Because it's a process and it is ongoing on a daily basis. But I can share you and I can stand as a professional, no engineer, what is on your No pilot would like to compromise a safety issue because he will not be sure who is going to be on that flight next. He could be the same person. So uh, let's give it for what is, is called a robust environment that everybody is expected to do his bit. Well, yes, indeed. That may well be the case, but that's human nature. That's why we have checks and balances, not because we assume that everybody will do the right things. We also have these checks and balances to make sure that you check, check, and double check. But to this other one, is there a ceiling of the age of aircraft that are allowed into this country? I hope you didn't lose me now. Okay, I, I want to believe I, I, I heard about something about age of aircraft and double checking. The word is not double checking. The word is continuous checking. There is no sleeping. 
the director of air Ordinance in NCA, the director general of NCA, I can assure you the most frequent calls I've received in the last two years is from the director general of NCA or the current acting director general or the director of air Ordinance or director of operations and it is continuous. This morning I've received a call about a craft coming from Kenya in Lagos and there is something that needed to be checked out and I needed to cross check and I had to get an approval. So it, 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 it's ongoing, it's not double checking, it is 100 checking and it's done hourly, minute by minute and it's an exciting job so you wouldn't even know that you're doing anything that is demanding. If you look at my eyes really, I haven't had a good sleep. Because of the aircraft I just mentioned about that came in yesterday to Lagos from Kenya. And things need to be done. External affairs need to be contacted because of a diplomatic flight and there are issues that need to be resolved. So I want to assure you that Nigeria cannot fly to the United States of America on a direct flight if we not meet certain indices of safety compliance. And that's why we are a category one environment in civil aviation like anywhere else in the world that it is we are compliant and we need to just uh, recognize that one accident is to propel us to just do more and sustain what we are doing yeah, it does not mean that our environment was in any way deficient is there a ceiling and of the age of that aircraft that must are allowed into the country Say again. do we have a ceiling of the age of aircraft that are allowed into the country to operate of course. Now, that has been said over time. It was a regulation many years ago uh, under a particular minister. Say again. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, I said to you that there is definitely a ceiling of age. That, that's an airworthiness issue by NCAA. And of course, that has to be done just to avoid anybody bringing in anything. But on aeronautical scientific basis. Any aeroplane can, call it 30 years old, that goes into a check and comes out. <laughs> it's looking like a brand new aircraft from an A to a D check. If you strip an aeroplane, all the fuselage naked, and does the complete check, that aeroplane comes out new. But if our regulation says, well, if the manufacturing age is uh, 10 years, don't bring it in, definitely we'll obey that rule. And that was done at the days of back 11, if you recall, when that happened. In any case, in these days of global competition, which manufacturer wants to sustain an aeroplane of the 1970s, where there is high fuel consumption, where the composite manufacturing material is more expensive? Why would the man go on fly-by-wire, glass cockpit? So you could see that on both sides, there is the drive to drive newer machines to fly newer machines. And that's where we are going. It will be more expensive. We have 737 flying in our airspace. And that's the truth. And that is being attracted by compliance to the NCA regulation. So I, I, I want to say that the, 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 the forces and the rules in place is just what Nigerians need to embrace and take on a flight, close your eyes and sleep and get to a destination feeling like a king that you are in your own country. All right, I hope you get feedback and, uh, uh, on all of this, but we have to let it go here. That's all the time we have. Uh, Mr. Namdudo is the Managing Director of NAMA. Thank you very much indeed for speaking.